I think preparation stage is really really important because you have to first decide on which colors you will choose. I use PowerPoint here to understand which colors exist on my dog and I use the eyedropping tool for that. So I chose my pen pastels and my pastel pencils accordingly. Drawing the initial sketch can be tricky with pastels because pastel mats are pretty thick and dark color. So what I did here on a thin paper, I traced my dog picture first and I turned its back and I traced it again with my white pastel pencil. After that, I placed it on my pastel mat again and I traced it one more time with a different pen. Here we go, you see that we have beautiful sketch right now. It's not too dark, it's perfect. And this is the end result. It's a beautiful realistic dog. Now I will explain to you step by step how I made this drawing and what you should be careful about. First, I created a background. Background should be created first because your dog's fur will be also drawn upon the background. So it makes sense. I used different colors here, dark blue, black, dark green, and I also used some yellow and white. You can see I dipped my sponge into this lighter colored pen pastel, white or yellow. And then I started with a spot and that's my center. And I started going spiral around that center drawing circles and the pen pasta gets like weaker and weaker as you go outwards. This is how I created this blurry circle effect. Here you see I'm doing the same thing with yellow color. I am applying a little bit of pressure here. For the remaining of the background, I think I did two or three layers and finally I blended them all with my fingers. The very first layer is important. I used pen pastel for this and you can see me applying these with this makeup tool looking pastel tool. This is the layer that we don't care about details but we care about the main tones. So how do we decide on the colors you ask? It is important to look at the reference photo and see the main colors, main underneath color of that fur. So I see here white. I didn't use white here. I used light gray or off-white and I will explain why in a minute. I also added all these brown tones and gray tones which are the shadows right here before we add all the details. Sometimes it is difficult to add lighter tones on a darker tone, so we have to be careful about when we are applying a darker tone in the background. In order to blend, we use a Q-tip, but we don't blend too much because this is a dog and it has fur instead of a portrait like a skin, human skin. So we need to keep it a little bit structured. But of course, I had to blend at some point, but not all of them. Don't forget to add this purple part underneath the nose as well. The fur details. We do the fur details with our pastel pencils. I use different colors, different tones of my color actually, different tones of brown for example, to give some depth. And you see that it is not sharpened at all because with pastels, you don't really have to sharpen them to the fine point. I blend them in the places that they look blurry, but I don't blend them if they don't look blurry at all. Look at the colors I use. I use this light brown first. It's kind of orangey brown tone. It's almost the same color as my paper. Then I used light gray. It was perfect for this light toned fur. Then I used some dark gray to give some depth to my light gray. Then you see me adding this sepia color, which is a little bit of reddish brown. It was perfect for the eyebrows. And finally, all the shadows, all the darkest areas were done with my dark brown. Back and forth, we are using these pencils interchangeably. Then we are getting this beautiful fur effect. Let's talk about eyes now. 
Eyes are of course very important, like in every portrait. Although our dog had black eyes in the reference photo, I didn't use black right away. I used indigo first, which is very very dark blue, because I wanted to give some depth. Of course, I didn't color the reflection parts, because the reflection parts are light blue. We are not going to touch that area with our dark pencils. Around the eye, I used all these fur colors, brown colors, as you see. In the end, I added some black on top of that indigo, and I blended with my Q-tip. How do we do the white fur then? In the beginning, I told you I didn't use white. I used off-white or light gray as a background. This is why, because I wanted to add white fur with my pencil on that background. Because my background is now two or three tones darker than white, now my white fur can show. How about the nose? So the nose had some purplish tones to it. So I added with my black first, but then I added also purple to this black. Whenever you use black, please make sure that you add some other tone to it. I'm sure there's a hidden tone, hidden hue there. And you can see that there are three reflection areas here. I added my purplish red there and some purplish pink later. In order to give them a realistic effect, I blended them with my Q-tip afterwards. Of course, I am applying very lightly, very gently here because these are highlighted parts. So how about the shadows? As you can see, the right part of our puppy is pretty dark in comparison to the left part. And my dark brown wasn't dark enough when I compared to the reference photo, so I, I added some black on top of that brown, but I did not put any pressure on my pencil while I was doing that, and I colored it with circular motions. Afterwards, I blended with my Q-tip, and this is really important, I added all the fur back, which are actually on that shadow. Why do we use blue here under the nose? Because white fur reflects all the lights, all the colors that are around us. Because white fur reflects the colors and lights of which it is surrounded by. And it is reflecting blue here, that's why I added my blue and of course on top of that I added all these white fur. All the shadows are added, you can see on the right part I added more black on my brown and of course I blended it, then I added the fur on top of that. So how about the tongue? I used a very light pink color with my pen pastel first. And in order to draw the shadows I used my purplish pink pastel pencil and here the darkest part I made with my purple color. I think I did maybe two or three layers here and it was enough. Of course, we need to blend with our Q-tip afterwards. In order to give the black area here on the tongue some depth, I mixed it with my violet color. This shadow area on the tongue is important because it gives this realistic effect. How do we give this blurry effect on the fur? I want to draw your attention to the lower left part of our dog. You can see that I added all these fur with brown and white colors. Now, using my fingers, I'm going to give them this blur effect. I'm not putting a lot of pressure and I did it only twice. I'm barely touching it and I'm using my fingers in the direction of the fur growth so that I can give that blurry effect. Of course, you can use your Q-tip instead of your fingers. I just had clean fingers then and I wanted to do that. How do we decide on the shadow tone? This is important because when you look at the reference photo, this part that I circled with is as dark as the right side of the dog, but not in my drawing, so I have to darken it up. What I did, I mixed with dark brown with black there and I, of course, blended with my Q-tip. When it comes to whiskers, we have to make sure that everything underneath is done. Because if you want to fix something about the fur underneath, it will be really difficult to go and fix it. 
I'm using my white pastel pencil here. It is pretty opaque, so it was great in terms of drawing these whiskers. They are not really thin, like a colored pencil thin, so if you want really realistic results, you might as well use your colored pencil. But I think pastel pencil work really fine. Of course, you have to be loyal to your reference photo in terms of the direction and the length of the whiskers. Final edits are really, really important. You can see that I'm gonna darken up those eyes and it's going to change the expression of our puppy. Usually as the last edits, I add more fur or more shadow. I darken up the darkest part and I lighten up the lightest parts. Try to make sure if there's any mistake that I wanna fix. And just like you saw, I also fixed the background a little bit and it's all ready. I hope you like this video guys and you found it helpful. If you like this video, you might as well like my other videos, so check them out. Hope to see you next week. Bye. Thanks for watching my video. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And for my real-time narrated tutorials, visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash Stay with art and love.